Hey, it's Kyle, and I think you should read Peace by Gene Wolfe, unless you shouldn't. This novel is what appears at first glance to be a Midwestern memoir, uh, published, or written rather, written by Gene Wolfe in 1975 about a man named Alden Weir, Den, who lived in the early to mid-20th century. But it's more than that. It's way more than that. Now, as I said, unless you shouldn't, there are some content warnings. I'll put them in a comment down below. But I hope that you read it anyway if you can. Obviously, if you, those things are what make it possible for you to enjoy the novel, then you shouldn't. But this is a novel that rewards the careful reader. In fact, while there are some spoilers in this discussion... It would be really difficult to really spoil this novel because it's written... Uh, Neil Gaiman says this, Gene Wolfe once defined good literature as that which could be read with pleasure by an educated reader and reread with increased pleasure. That is why this introduction to peace is at the end of the book. This is a book that carefully unveils itself over several readings and over a great deal of thought. Be as I said, it's difficult to spoil because of that. And I want to talk a little bit about why I think you should read this novel. First, the book has sort of a puzzle-like quality in a sense. While it tells you at the beginning exactly what it's about, although it may be hard to understand that at first, the, the premise of the novel is that Den is going through his house, which functions as sort of a memory palace of rooms that either remind him of particular events in his life or where particular events in his life occurred. And as he's doing this, he's casting his mind back to these different times, remembering people, remembering events. And it's up to us to kind of put together the puzzle of the things that have happened in his life. And in fact, some of the particularly important events are the ones that are particularly difficult to puzzle out. Part of that is because in many cases, we see the setup to an event. We see the fallout from the event. We don't see the climax in between. We're left to infer what happened. But part of that is because there are these interpolated stories, diegetic, I think is the term, that is, stories that are being told by characters within the fiction. Somebody at a party telling a ghost story, uh, a child reading a book of fairy tales, those sorts of things. And those are where we really see what happened. That's where the unreliable narrator is sort of uncovered and we can find out the truth if we look closely enough. Another reason I want you to read it is because of the themes that it deals with. This book deals with weighty, heavy themes. The relationship of memory to reality. The relationship of capitalism and class. Gene Wolfe has things to say about landlords. Not a fan. Uh, and those who exploit workers and the working class, as well as issues of racism, sexism, xenophobia, and really addressing who thinks they're an insider versus an outsider, who does belong versus who thinks they belong. This is where some of the content warnings come into play, by the way. There is casual racism throughout the book, but over time we see that the context is certainly not approving, but rather using it to illuminate the morality of the people who are saying these things, believing these things, doing these things. One more reason I would like you to read it is because of the beautiful writing within the novel. There are passages here that will stick with me for a very long time. I'm going to share just a couple of them with you. But it may be that the only reason childhood memories act on us so strongly is that, being the most remote we possess, 
they are the worst remembered. And so offer the least resistance to that process by which we mold them nearer and nearer to an ideal which is fundamentally artistic, or at least non-factual. Happy is the man who has found his work, but of course, the addict who has found a quart jar of heroin is happy too. One kind of addiction is approved by society, and the other is not, but both destroy their victims. Matter and energy cannot be destroyed, doctor, only transformed into one another. Thus, whatever exists can be transformed, but not destroyed. But existence is not limited to bits of metal and rays of light. Vistas and personalities and even memories all exist. If these sorts of passages resonate with you, then I think you'll enjoy reading this book. The final and selfish reason that I hope that you read this novel is frankly because I want to talk about it with people. It seems like there's just not much discussion of peace on BookTube. Almost everything about Gene Wolfe is about his book of the new sun, which I do love and we'll be talking more about in the future. But if you've read it, or if you do read it, please comment down below. Talk with me about it. I want to see what you think, what things resonated with you, what you puzzled out from the stories. That would be fantastic. I hope you do read it. I hope you can enjoy it. And until then, talk to you soon.